Hey guys, this is White Mog here with a new video, and in this video, I'm going to be creating my logo from scratch for Apple Black, the Apple Black logo from scratch. And y'all can just see it as a logo, so you can take little tidbits here and there and apply them to what you guys are doing. Here, I'm in Photoshop, and I'm using a font. This is like my foundation font. This is the font that I'm going to use and then alter to create what I want to create. Sometimes you can have a font that's completely handwritten or you know created some other technical way and illustrator and stuff like that but just follow me these are like some really basic steps and tips that you know help stimulate your mind to create your own logos and you know you can experiment here and there i will also have uh some logos that i think are interesting flashing across the screen from time to time and y'all can leave in the comments what you feel is you know one of your favorite logos from tv shows and animes whatever it be so here you know it's in the font layer and uh, the font i had i just have it in black uh, in a silhouette form, uh, that's like good practice. Sometimes a logo is perfect in just black, like my white manga logo at the start of the video. That's just black. But here, here is in text, and text is usually very difficult to edit. Uh, say if I, you know, uh, click on erase. And by the way, this font is actually like a Doctor Who kind of font. Uh, Matt Smith, Doctor Who, Doctor Who. Anyways, here, if you take an eraser, you can't erase the text. Right, so you have to change the layer to a rasterized layer. When you see that stuff, when you see that stop sign uh, hovering across the mouse, that's you know it's you have to before you can edit it, you have to kind of change it to a raster layer, and that'll be like right clicking on the layer, and it should be there rasterized. And once you rasterize, then you can mess around with it, and you can erase it the way you just saw me do. Uh, but from here, I'm turning it, turning this font into uh, the Apple Black font. And I'm doing this because the old one is kind of pixelated and I didn't create it properly. And so I'm, you know, take going through some steps to make this work. You see the background layer at the bottom. You make sure you're working on a separate layer. You, as, as long as you use text anyways, it's probably going to be a separate layer regardless. But eventually that background layer that's at the bottom is going, I'm going to erase. Like we, either you can delete it or make it invincible. So the font is kind of it can be on its own the shape of the image is the shape of the font and you know to keep that would be you saving the file as a PNG if you save as a JPEG it will save it inside a white box by default so you have to make sure you save the file uh, as a PNG and what I'll do at the end of the video is I'll actually turn whatever I create as a vector but throughout the video I'm going to be experimenting show you guys things that you can do for your uh, titles and similar things that you know other titles have done and not just like series but like just designs right at the end of the day logo for your series whatever is just a design so here I'm just experimenting showing you guys what you can do once in this in its in its silhouette form and here you know I haven't even altered the uh, silhouette at all again it's no longer a text file because we've rasterized it and here this the this image we just brought in as well we also rasterized that uh, so that we can mess with it and you know you can do certain things where here I selected all the black and then I clicked on the like masking layer thing and you see what it does it, it, you see what it does to the bottom it has this really scratchy etchy uh, you know school cool edgy design but you know the problem here is we can't really read it properly unless you're familiar with apple black that's the only way you can actually read that so you can see me experimenting right you know you can have several drafts of whatever you want your final design to be so yeah i'm putting it again it's almost like i'm starting from scratch and you know i'm going to turn it into a raster file in a sec uh you can do most of the stuff in like other software by the way uh, I'm just using Photoshop. Photoshop and Illustrator are usually the best ones to do this with. Uh, here, you know, I, uh, uh, I adjusted the layer and turned it into a black and white, and now I'm messing with the levels. If you can just follow, this is kind of like an observational tutorial for the most part, but you can follow me and do as I do uh, if you really want to learn. I think that's the best practice to kind of do along, you know, move along with me, uh, almost like a workshop. I actually had a live workshop a couple of days ago. It was a lot of fun, and I probably will do another one, like a live workshop with people and doing like a like a basically a live tutorial. But yeah, you know, that's not what this video is about. Moving on. And here, uh, once you once I mess with the layers and make it a little more black and white, you can then select and do the same thing again, right? And uh, when you select with the uh, lasso tool or magic wand, you want to make sure that uh, continue. What 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 the hell is it pronounced? contiguous I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it well uh, but that kind of if that's ticked off any any color you t uh, cl uh, click would uh, it will automatically select everything in that same color 
uh, say you can you know click on the masking layer uh, the masking quick masking button or you can just select that make that layer invisible go to the original text layer and then uh, delete all the selected parts from the uh, from the text layer that you turned that you raster that you rasterized here this is still the selection and you can do even more stuff with it um, let me see here what I decided to do here is I'm going to you can make it look like a blood blood spat a blood splatter and uh, yeah, I'll just fill in with red and you can do a control D to deselect everything and you know almost look like looks like blood splatter but we, we have most of it on the white white space which is like for the background part which we don't even want anyways so here what I'm going to do yeah so once I have I have that in there but then well, the problem here is I already have the holes in the text uh, you know God bless digital 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 art you the control Z button is your best friend you know how I say erase a lot <laughs> if you're a digital artist control Z a lot <laughs> uh, so here basically I just want to get it back to where I can uh, I have the full text the text in full even though it looks kind of cool here but I'm trying to do something different so uh, I'm going to want the text back in its full form uh, like I have it here so there's a lot of control Z's to get it back to this plot and I still have that the blacks from the scratchy file earlier selected and you know same thing you fill in and you have the blood right so now I have that blood layer uh, you can now go back to the original layer and make the blood layer um, invisible then you you can see here I clicked on the contiguous and you know you have to then start clicking on everything at the same time but if you have it off once you click on a color it selects everything of that color and since now I've selected all the text I put uh, the layer blood layer on I go back to the blood layer and I hit delete and it creates what I want and it almost seems like the font has like blood splatter all over it looks kind of cool right uh, here another thing you could do is you can uh, add like some kind of gradient to it here I'm gonna you know change the colors of the gradient and you can do it in a separate layer as long as you have the shape the silhouette of the font selected somehow you get that selection then you know, I'm just going to add a gradient and change that layer into a multiply. Uh, arrange the layers accordingly so you can see the blood splatter. And you can, you know, this is this is kind of similar to the Attack on Titan logo. Uh, there's still more to do if you want to achieve that Attack on Titan logo look. But this is kind of, you know, the thinking behind it. So here I'm just going to undo most of this because this is not what I want. This is not a, how the Apple Black logo is supposed to look. But once I have this foundation of what I want, um then you can now start messing around with it uh, here you know creating a logo I, I want something that's really related to the story of Apple Black um, and if you're interested in Apple Black you know I'm just uh, for those who are new I'm the writer and illustrator of Apple Black it's, uh, it's a comic it's my comic published in serialized and Saturday AM uh, you can check out the first three chapters free first four chapters free in the description below or you can purchase volume one and that was the logo that's the old logo that just flashed across the screen but um, you can purchase the first nine chapters in volume one. There's a link in the description as well. Or you can check out Saturday AM as well that has other comics within it. Basically like a Shonen Jump here in the West. Uh, so yeah, back to this video. And here, you, the, the theme of this, of this font, um, which not many people catch, but some people have caught it, is that uh, I, wanted the, I wanted the letters, the alphabets, to resemble keyholes. And the idea was that, based on the story, the main character Sano is kind of like a key to something. And I've referenced I've referenced this a little bit. In fact, I referenced it in chapter one, saying that he's like a key and lock to something. And here, so I don't want to go too much into that. But here, uh, I have it in silhouette, and I'm just trying to finalize the silhouette and then mess with it further. And that's kind of the approach I'm going with this uh, with this design. As you as you know, there. It, several designs and several ways you can do even the things that I'm doing right now I'm just doing it the quickest way making it simple for you guys to see and uh, there's several ways to approach a design there's several ways to pro approach a logo uh, and when I say logo I mean talking text logo not like an icon not like the Apple 
icon or I, a, Apple logo. This is just like a text logo with the, for the title of the series. And so, and here with Apple Lack is the theme is keyholes. And you know, that's what I was going for here. Uh, the blue, the color choice of blue, it kind of varies. Uh, but for the most part, since uh, Santa is the main character um, of the show, and it's not necessarily blue. Blue is not really what I'm going for. I'm going for like a purplish, like a light blue purple thing. That's what I'm going for. Not necessarily straight up blue or straight up red. Um, something in between, but a little more subtle, a little easier to look at. Not straight up purple either. So in like in between blue and purple, or yeah, yeah, in between blue and purple. That's the color I'm going for with a gradient, and that's what that's what I'm trying to achieve. But here, once I here I'm just trying to make sure that uh, I'm getting the keyholes right, and I'm using the direction buttons to make sure they are on the same line. With rather than moving that, uh, rather than moving the selection, because I just use the rectangle selection, and I'm just deleting. I'm literally deleting um, parts of this silhouette. And again, it's a raster layer, so you can do all this stuff. Um, I move it when I have to, but if I don't need to, I'm not going to. So for instance, after uh, deleting this A, I'm just going to use the direction and just pull it, uh, press it, press it. I just keep pressing it, pressing the, um, the right button on the keyboard to the part where to the, to, to the middle of the C part and once I have that I hit delete then I press down you know and do the same thing so I'm making sure everything is organized I'm making sure everything looks as professional as possible and you know it has it's not symmetrical but you know it's I want it to be organized and uh, I think the another thing that kind of helps is that the words are, you know, it's a two-word two, two word title, Apple Black, so five letters each, so it kind of complements each other where I can have the apple at the top of the black, or I can have them side by side uh, when I want to, say, put it on the spine of the book. But the key thing with this Apple Black logo is really getting, getting the silhouette and right now the silhouette is near perfect the only issue here so far is that the L's aren't exactly the same the L's are not exactly the same so I'm just gonna save for now but I'm going what I'm going to do to make sure the L's are the same um, and it's a good thing to do it in Photoshop because Photoshop has some kind of snap automatic snapping thing like an auto snap so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer, uh, the layer of the silhouette. So already rasterized, so I, that's how I was able to mess with it. Now I'm just trying to duplicate the layer. And that will be to just right click the layer and hit duplicate, duplicate layer, or, or drag it down to an icon at the bottom, but the easiest way is to just right click and duplicate the layer. Yeah, before I do that, I noticed this, I forgot one thing with the B. B kind of looks a little awkward. Uh, I forgot to put like um, some kind of demarcation uh, from the top curve and the bottom curve to make it really look like a B. And I'm going to use the pen tool here. And it's kind of weird and tricky to use the pen tool, but you could even do it manually. But I just chose to use the pen tool just to be a little more precise. With what I'm doing and the way the pen tool works is kind of tricky I'd leave that to another video again just leave it as an observational stuff I don't want to bombard you guys with too much information uh, to some of you guys you might already have exactly what you need um, so here I'm just trying to create the curve with the pen tool and there's a way it works because when you click on a new part you can you, you don't click and stop you click and you drag because you click and stop you're just creating a straight a straight line and creating a square or some kind of weird polygon shape thingy but anyways um, then now once you rinse you done with the pencil you have to turn it into a path and that's you you click on path and then you click on the the lasso looking icon at the bottom and it turns it into a path and once it once it's a path you can then um, hit go to the layer of the text and hit delete and you can keep messing around with it uh, if you're interested. Most of the stuff with text, I, I really um, 
advised to you know search for more tutorials because you'll learn more stuff I'm just trying to do a quick tutorial since I'm creating an Apple black logo all over, all over again I decided to do it in front of you guys to see how it's actually done so here I've made a duplicate layer and uh, I deleted everything except the L of one and now I'm just gonna drag that L to the bottom L to make sure they're exactly the same and Photoshop actually helps you putting it exact in the exact spot and then I'm going to straight up delete the previous L. The previous L just took an L. If any of you understand, like, to really know how to create all this stuff, you really need to understand how layers work, how the lasso tool works, how the magic wand works, how the fill button works, how the gradient tool works. And, you know, the software like Clip Studio, Manga Studio have these. But you know they're good to to know. Like if you knew that before hopping onto this tutorial, it will be much easier. And chances are you'd know how to create a logo on its own. Another thing you need to know is the difference between raster uh, raster files and uh, vector files. Vector files are files that once you, no matter how much you expand them, they don't they're not going to pixelate, right? Because uh, you created them in Illustrator and they're EPS file or whatever. But raster files, if you expand them a little much depending on the size of the file you will see uh, it will be pixelated so here I've selected I selected all the text so here I'm going to contract by 10 and once I contracted by 10 I created a new layer and filled that uh, filled like the new selection with white then I contract again uh, but this time I'm contracting by 7 and in a new layer I'm gonna fill that with a color and for the most part we're already almost done with the logo so I'm just gonna call it a color part I'm gonna find that again it's like a weird bluish it's not exactly blue blue but for the most part you, at first glance you call it blue but it's kind of like uh, almost purple but not quite and f really you know this could be it uh, I think we were done when I created the silhouette but now I'm creating it to the point where yes how the logo would look say if I wanted to put it on a book cover and stuff like that how I create the Apple black logo for things like that for like the really really official stuff and at this point yes now I've made the last layer the background layer invisible because we don't need that and that's why you see this kind of boxy background and that just means you see it's see-through at that point uh, so here I'm looking for uh, the gradient so I'll create a layer I'll create a layer called uh, just uh, I'll create a new layer to put the gradient on and I make sure I'm selecting that the colored part right and I'm just gonna put the gradient on there uh, I'm going to turn that layer into a multiply so that we, you know we see through it um, and you know now it's just gradient itself is not exactly how I want it to look so I just keep messing with it and maybe a dark blue is not what I want so I'm gonna change that into a black but I'm still messing with the gradient again you need to know know how the gradient tool works so it's just like a click and drag and because it's gonna click and drag and go through every selected part of the image um, if you select only one part of an image, it's going to, the gradient is only going to show within that. So since I have all the, the, col the colored part, all the blue parts selected, the gradient is going to go through that and that alone. And now I've changed it to black and I'm just, you know, messing with the gradient to get it how I want it. And at this point, for the most part, the logo is done, really. Uh, the, the only thing left would be to, you know, create several versions and then you know, vec uh, create vector vector images of the logo that can be used in the future for merch, t-shirts, whatever. And and I uh, I'll I, I think I'll leave the vectorizing part of it for a separate video because I again I think that's too much. And here, since I have the color part on a separate layer, I can always just go change the color the color it could be blue now but maybe uh, you know similar to say how one punch man covers are the color the color of the 
logo is not always the same, you know. So like volume two of Apple Black is going to be a different color. It's not going to be blue. But the shape, the silhouette, that's the strong part. Uh, one thing that will help, uh, like uh, prerequisite to this video, yeah, they'll help you is if you watch my other video about branding, which I'll link to, or you can uh, watch uh, the link to the video will be in the video cards of this video. And if you've watched that, you, this video should be a little easier for you to understand. So here I can experiment and I'm just gonna change that color part to red. And it's not gonna affect the gradient because the gradient is already there. I just made it invisible so I could select the colored part easier easily and yeah it's red and you or you can just mess with the hue of the um, of the file and you can change the color that way uh, that could be easy that could be an easier way to do things but here this is the logo it's really done at least for Photoshop wise uh, this is pre vectorized uh, but for the most part it's done and you can mess with the color here I just showed you a different way you can manually go change the color um, or you can just mess with the hue and I can get it to whatever color I want. So now I want to create how I want to I want to show how it how it will look for a spine. And that's really just taking the black and putting it on the side, making it side by side with apple black. So I'm changing the size of the canvas and that's really when you hit a C on your keyboard, then you can automatically move things around and uh, then hit enter and then you you can change whatever you change to a different tool. So I'm gonna turn off. Uh, I'm gonna cre I'm gonna turn off the gradient because I want a different kind of gradient for this. Um, here, you know, the gradient is starting from the bottom and going to the top, and I want that same feel for the, for the black on the side. Because if I just click and drag the black to the side, uh, maybe turn everything, merge all the layers, and then turn uh, take the black to the side, the gradients. The black will be darker than the apple, and I want them to have. I want them to be in the same, the same groove, the same kind of gradient. You will, just follow me, and you will understand the whole up here. So I've turned off the gradient, uh, and I'm just gonna select the the. Right now, I'm only selecting the black because that's the the layer I'm on. So once I select the black at the bottom. I control um, control C and then control V it'll create a I'll automatically create a new layer and I'm gonna once you're on that layer that new layer if you hit a control T then you can drag the text and Photoshop kind of assists you to the point where it's exactly on the same line as the Apple and once I have it to that point then you know it's all that's left now is to do the same thing we did before is here with the black I'm going to you know, select it, uh, contract by 10, fill it with white, go go to the white layer and fill it with white, then contract again by 7, and then fill it with the same red color in this, in this case. And then, when I'm on that color, I, you know, I uh, create a new gradient layer, uh, or a new layer for the gradient, and then I, and I do that. So when you're creating logos, you also want to be thinking of how they look, how they look, you know, on the spine of a book, putting Apple up on top of the black, it's not going to work, really, because then, you know, there'll be a lot of space on the spine and it's not going to look nice and stuff like that. Uh, you see some logos that have maybe like an icon behind the text. Like, again, it's not going to work for a spine. So if you were creating a, uh, creating this for the spine of a book, you I would put the black on the side and I'll get rid, get rid of the icon behind it. Um, a One Piece logo is one of those that, well, I think One Piece logo is fine. I'll have to recheck, but I think the One Piece logo is another logo that is altered to look better for a spine. So don't be afraid to alter it, alter the logo to put it on a spine of a book where it's legible for people to see in a bookstore and stuff like that. Like it's also part of marketing. As long as the silhouette of the logo is the same, you're usually still safe. Or if you created a completely new logo for the spine, but the new design is still still in the same spirit of the original logo, you should be fine. So here I have it selected, and I'm just going to put in the gradient. Always do stuff like on a new layer. Um, 
again you want to change this layer to a multiply right now is normal you change it to multiply so it becomes see-through anyway. it's okay for me to delete this now because uh, I already have I already saved two separate Photoshop files so I can get rid of this and resize the canvas so where this is like the spine version of the logo and the previous one was just the logo normal I guess and the spine version sometimes could serve as the normal version it, it just depends on the image or it depends on where it's going to be placed yeah there is in at least for me in that like there isn't really a normal logo sometimes it can be side to side sometimes it's not again if you want to change the canvas you just hit a C for a crop and you move it around hit enter and you, then you change the tool by hitting a if you hit a B you change to a brush you hit a P it's a pen hit a W I think that's a old magic wand you know uh, again if you, you you can always gain experience using stuff like Photoshop there are lots of videos online um, this channel is not necessarily a Photoshop Photoshop kind of channel but you know I try to do stuff because this is part of you learning to create you know your comic is part of creating your comic creating a logo is part of it there's more stuff you can do like uh, Photoshop allows for where if you double click on the layer on the side not the text part of the layer but on the side of it you can mess around with the glow or mess around with a drop shadow as you will see I, I do here in this video and it's just things where you mess around with like the you know mess around with the settings and you can come up with something cool you can always mess around with colors angles you will see in a second you want to make sure you're on the drop shadow layer or the glow layer whatever layer you're trying to mess with so here we're in the drop shadow and then you can see how things are affected granted all this stuff are probably more difficult to do in illustrator when you're vectorizing the file but if you have a if your Photoshop file is large enough and even if it's a raster file and it's large enough and the size is fine it's big enough to where you only have to worry about shrinking it rather than increasing it you should be safe you know you may not need to vector but vectorizing your logos is a good practice as well as trademarking them but trademarking copyrights that's a video for another time here I'm on the glow uh, and again, you see that tick, it's like an on and off, it's almost like invisible or not kind of thing. So on that glow, you could have messed with the colors, etc, etc, etc. Basically, just have, have fun with the settings. And you know, it's a digital file, you can always save a copy and you play around with another one. Control Z to whatever you, you however you want to mess with it. Here, the only, the only reason only Apple has the shadow is because Apple and black are on different layers. Uh, but yeah. This is the logo for Apple Black. I think I danced around everything a whole lot to where y'all know y'all get the idea. Uh, please leave a uh, question in the comments if you have any. Leave a comment at all if you have any comments. Um, don't forget to like this video, share this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, check out Apple Black. Check out Saturday AM and all the titles there. Uh, check out my social media. Uh, appreciate all the support so far. Uh, watching this video to the end, I know it's kind of long. But yeah, this was swell, and I have a new logo to vectorize for next time. My manga and I'm out.